हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर संदीप वालिया हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी मैनेजमेंट चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल मार्केटिंग एंड सेल्स ऑफ कार्गो अंडर द पेपर कार्गो ऑपरेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ मार्केटिंग and sales of the cargo the students will also be able to classify various types of marketing strategies in cargo industry they will also be able to understand the marketing process in the later they will also be able to learn the latest marketing concepts the air cargo industry has undergone many significant changes from last one decade with the growth of air cargo industry and specialization of door to door services offered by the cargo express carriers passengers carrying airlines offers more customer oriented services with great attention to the customer satisfaction the scenario of air cargo industry has changed with the emergence of large cargo carrying passenger aircrafts and fast moving cargo airlines with the emergence of new service providers in the cargo industry the competition among marketing and sales organization has increased tremendously with the globalization the whole world has become a small village and global market is in the reach of every customer from the recent trends we can say that the demand for air cargo service will continue to grow in the time to come the aviation and cargo industry is no more concerned about expanding the logistic systems only but they emphasize on higher processing speeds greater efficiency time bound delivery specialized customer services reduced cost and personalized services let us take on the production concept of marketing the production concept of marketing believes that the customer will favor those products who are easily available and highly affordable in the market the organizations who believe in production concept try to minimize cost and maintain the product quality in the production concept the price of the material is raised on the cost of production and it distribution channels the promotion marketing and advertisement of the product was minimum and limited to the awareness level of the existence of the product the customers also sacrifice quality when they simply are able to get the product let us discuss about the product concept of marketing in the product concept the companies believe that the consumers will favor those products that offer high quality of level performance innovative features and excellent services the companies who are interested in product concept produces new products with interesting features and they want to attract the attention of customers or consumers with the help of their innovative ideas there is only try to test their products in the smaller markets without launching them at the larger level these companies are interested in getting feedback from the customers for the product they are already using and they always try to improve the features of the products and technologies by offering new innovative technologies and products in the market the second one is the selling concept this idea believes that the customer will buy those products that are the high demand in the market and hence the try to create high demands in the market these companies believe in large scale selling and promotional activities these companies emphasizes on aggressive selling to achieve its organization goals the selling concept believes in creating pressure selling and manipulating the techniques of sales so that their business increases this approach is companies entered rather than customer centric the disadvantage of this technique is that this only tends to ignore what are the demands and needs of the users and the customers let us now discuss about the concept of marketing students the marketing concept believes that the achievement of organizational goals depend on determining the needs and wants of target customers and delivering the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the probable competitors as per the marketing concept it means that all the efforts of an organizations aims at satisfying its customers this concepts advocates 
to give the customers what they need or want from the product. Marketing is a management process that identifies, anticipates and satisfies customer requirements, needs and wants profitably. There are five important factors which contribute to the marketing concept and these factors are to analyze need, want and demand of the customer. The second one is to provide marketing offers. The third one is total quality management value and satisfaction. The fourth one is exchange transaction and relationship while the fifth one is the market. It includes actual buyers, potential buyers to analyze need, want and demand of the customer. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Needs means a state of felt deprivation for example hunger, deprivation of food. It can be individual needs which means need of fame, need for education, etc. Then the, th then the third element is the wants. The form taken from human needs and shaped by culture and individual personality. For example, American thirsty need to drink but want coca or Fanta. Then there is demands which is a human needs that are back to buy the buying powers. The second one is the to providing marketing offer. A set of benefits given to the customers along with product is known as marketing offers. Some combination of products, services, information and experiences are offered to the market to satisfy a need or want. A marketing offer may include persons, places. It also includes information, organizations, ideas. Total quality management, value and satisfaction. The difference between cost of obtaining a product and the value a customer gets from using that product is known as customer's value. The customer satisfaction from a product depends on the factors such as how well the product performs, how the product lives up to the expectations of customer and how that product delivers services that are expected from that product. The satisfaction of customer has main influence on futures buying behavior of that customer. If the performance of the product is lower than the expectation of the customer, the customer satisfaction is low. And if the performance of the product is higher than that of the expectation of the customers, the customer satisfaction is high. The next one is the exchange transaction and relationship. Exchange. Exchange means obtaining a required product from someone by offering some other product in return. While transaction, transaction means the trade of values between two stakeholders. Relationship, relationship means to provide such kind of services and satisfaction level to the customers so that the customer buys again and again the product of that company or we can say that the customer is retained as this process of retaining customers increases the business of the company. The next one is the market. The market is the place where actual and potential buyers of a product and suppliers come together. The customers share their need and want with the service providers in the market and in return service providers try to satisfy their needs and wants. Mainly there are two types of customers. One is potential customer and the other is actual customer. Actual customer is a customer who has already purchased the product while the potential customer is the customer who may become a customer in future or who can be motivated to buy a particular product by creating need and demand for the product. Let us now discuss about the marketing in service industry. Marketing is a continuous sequential process through which management in hospitality and service industry plans, implements, researches, controls and evaluate activities designed for satisfied customers, needs and wants and their organizational goals. Second is marketing fundamentals. These include satisfying customers needs and wants. Marketing is a continuous process. Marketing is a sequential process. The fourth one is that marketing research plays a very important role in marketing. Fifth one is independent nature of hospitality and travel organizations. Then the organization wide and multi-department efforts. Characteristics of marketing orientation. 
understanding the needs of customers is first priority and this is a continuous and continuous concern. Frequent reviews are made to of strength and weakness related to the competitors. Marketing research is a continuous activity which is assigned at a very high priority by the organizations. Customers' perception from the organization is known. Long-term planning is a very important process. Measurement and evaluation of marketing activities is performed regularly. The next is marketing orientation and its benefits. It produces more satisfied customers. There is a common goal for all departments, managers and staff members. Changes in customer needs and requirements are identified. Knowing exactly what our customers' needs and wants increase the ability to satisfy customers. It also includes feasibility of new product and services which are to be determined. Marketing expenditure and human resources are used effectively and efficiently. Changes in customer needs and are anticipated and acted upon. Then there is marketing opportunities are realized. Product services and promotional activities are designed in a way so that they match customer's image. Then there is increased cooperation between organization stakeholders leads to better service and greater customer satisfaction. Adaptation to change is made smoothly and these changes are not resisted. Better cooperation with various stakeholders and complementary organization improves customer satisfaction. The marketing programs which are effective are further expanded and improved while those marketing programs which are ineffective are dropped. Opportunities that serve customers more comprehensively or those that tap into related fields are capitalized upon. Let us now discuss about environment of tourism and hospitality marketing. It consists of two parts, controllable factors which are marketing strategy factors and the uncontrollable factors which are marketing environment factors. Marketing air cargo. Cargo service providers such as FedEx provide complete door-to-door -door service of cargo handling while the traditional cargo service providers deal only with the segment of the transportation within key points. Airport to airport transportation is generally preceded by other modes of transportation such as rail, road and water. The techniques to gain more customers consist of all type of business to business sales and marketing techniques. Cargo airlines also employs different sales representatives and tally callers to call on customers and to provide information about civil aviation services. The events like trade fairs, exhibitions, conferences and seminars play a vital role in bringing consumers and service providers together. A cargo service providers give more importance to the relationship building as it is a crucial part when it comes to a service and gaining new customers. Cargo airlines sell the space of the aircraft which is very limited in weight and volume and hence for the selling that space they need to help of various marketing organizations. Let us discuss about market assessment. It is a wrong perception that any airport which has runway can serve the air cargo shipment effectively. It is not necessarily true in every case. There are many stakeholders and variables which are responsible for the success of air cargo operations. These variables may include physical capacity of the airport, its geographical location, its landscape and infrastructure, its consumer market, access by road and rail, its reach to the various parts of the world, aircraft capacity, etc. Besides having all these things, there are many airports that have still problems in implementing successful air cargo services. The concept of market assessment has following important components which are to be considered. The first one is air service availability. Availability of direct air lift to service provider is the primary factor in taking routing decisions. Most of the shippers and air freight forwarders prefer delivery to the final destination of the air cargo rather than any connecting flight. So we can say that those airline services who provide services to the last destination without any change in the aircraft in between are the most preferable service providers by the air cargo operators. The second one is the time and cost efficiency. There are certain items in air cargo industry which are more time sensitive than others. These sensitive items include 
fresh food, seafood, flowers, emergency medicines and other emergency materials, equipment supply and such other items which are to be transported just in time. The global competition in the market raises price sensitivity for the commodities and this also creates the competition among service providers to provide services at minimum cost to get more number of customers. For such reasons, the cargo transporters place more emphasis on total cost and time efficiency when they are routing shipments by any airport. The third one is aircraft capacity and compatibility with cargo. There are certain commodities which require a special type of aircraft for its transfer from one place to another. Depending upon the community, that shipment will be restricted to certain aircraft types and may take extra time and cost for transportation. Such type of materials generally includes dangerous goods, hazardous materials, live animals and other costly materials. Then there is economies of consolidation. Many large international freight forwarders employ the gateway concept, consolidating regional air cargo shipment at a single gateway airport, thus enabling the freight forwarders to negotiate favorable rates with air carriers for large shipments. In addition, forwarded is able to optimize the utilization of utilized capacity by mixing heavy and light cargo. The next one is the market information. At the present time of internet and fast communication, the air cargo service providers, shippers and forwarded have a need for the update and accurate information. This information will help them to provide accurate services to the customers and to upgrade the service quality accordingly. The next one is the setting up of the objectives. General plan is usually established by most of the report in order to set out a strategy for the air services development. Under the plan, the priority is of the near intermediate and long term implementation are usually established. The priority is also designed in order to meet the needs of the traveling and shipping of the region. To set up the basis for the most important question in the marketing plan design, which is about the product should be assessed of the regional market combined with the assessment of the Air Force strength and weaknesses. Various facets can be considered whether we are promoting an international gateway because of a heavy concentration of international services or whether the airport on the consideration is a domestic airport with a strategic location and excellent domestic and road connectivity. Objective setting also needs to be outlined the steps that are necessary to overcome weaknesses and problems that have been raised and to determine how these weaknesses and problems can be addressed. Keep in mind that the marketing plan should have a clear strategy focus such as addressing weaknesses which are in the control of airport administration, then the capitalizing on a unique strength or a niche product. Once these factors are determined, then it is the time to formulate a set of general objectives which established the basis for all actions, future expenditures and cargo marketing plan. These objectives should be in reach of the organization. Some of the common examples of such objectives are as follow. It focuses on increasing the strength of air freight carriers, increasing the overhead cargo handled throughout the airport, in, increasing the amount of perishable business handled by the airport carriers, to attract additional integrator, express carriers and investors, to promote airport services so that new manufacturing and investment companies are attracted. Let us now discuss about the marketing plan for cargo. The cargo marketing plan is a plan with specific strategies for achieving the general objectives of the cargo organizations. The strategy of cargo marketing plan focuses on the promotion of the airport strength. In order to achieve the objectives of the cargo organizations, a well-defined marketing plan is most important. The marketing plan should target on the decision makers in key segments of the industry, the service providers and the stakeholders of the industry. The two most important targets of the cargo marketing plan are air freight forwarders and air carriers and passengers. Key decision makers of the air carriers must be made aware of a region's and airport's advantages as a location to do the business. 
air freight forwarders also play a very important role in the air freight process and cargo operations. The forwarders assemble shipments from a large number of shippers to form a consolidated shipment for a particular destination. The freight forwarders select service providers. They prepare the airway will and other bills, shipping documents and deliver the cargo assignment to the airline for transport. In the case of international shipments, the freight forwarders will arrange for custom clearances and excise clearance at the destination airport. In some cases, freight forwarders also expected to deliver the material to the consignee. In some cases where actual cargo freight operations are long-term goals, marketing may focus on developing and manufacturing complex on or proximate to the airport. Better concentration on industries that produces air-eligible products and airport and a reason can begin to develop part of the broader business dynamics that may eventually attract more cargo operations. Providing awareness, the marketing plan should aim to highlight the advantage of using the airport. This can be done by raising awareness among the cargo service providers and other stakeholders in the initial phase. This objective can be achieved with the help of a series of programs and these programs may include the selling of airport to the air carriers, air freight forwarders and destination makers at the international and regional levels. The selling programs usually take the form of cooperative or informational presentations which focuses on the competitive advantage of airports, services and facilities. Keeping in mind these factors which influence shippers' routing decisions, some airports highlight the strategic location and extensive international and domestic air service connection. Then there is targeting the market. When the air cargo marketing plan measures that there is a need of a profit strategy to target specific carriers, this can be achieved by providing detailed analytical information that supports the viability of the establishment of the operation in a particular airport. By reading annual reports and by doing research, the airport will be able to become more familiar with the company's operations and to determine the goals and philosophy so that it can expand the business with them in future. With the help of this information, the airport can make a report and present it to the senior management of the airlines so that they have a clear idea about the target market. Then there are marketing programs. Depending on the target audience, the initial marketing programs can take several forms. These programs are generally of two categories. The first one is cooperative programs and the second one is informational programs. The cooperative programs need to deal with social gathering where the informational programs takes the form of a business meeting held in office. Both these programs focus on competitive advantages of conducting business. Let us now discuss about cargo expeditions and advertising. Important elements of a marketing plan are cargo expositions and advertising. A company can target a wider audience, raise awareness of a product, influence target market with the help of a well-designed advertising strategy. The repeated advertisement will help the company to deliver its message to the target customers. Advertisement planning allows a company to deliver the right message to the right people at the right time to influence their buying behavior. Taking part in conferences, seminars and cargo expositions is an important part of cargo marketing plan as it gives a chance to reach more customers and stakeholders. One can take part in various following events like exhibitions, conferences, cargo expositions and event sponsorships. One can also take program in partnership in events organized by state and local governments. Participation in all our various events and programs will give the participant more visibility and clearance about the marketing strategies and it will also help them to build relationships with various stakeholders. Dear students, let us now discuss about latest marketing concepts. The first one is the telemarketing. Telemarketing is an important part of any marketing strategies nowadays as the number of mobile and internet users are increasing day by day. 
telemarketing campaigns helps a company to reach a group of targeted customers and prospective customers with the help of telecommunication. With the help of telemarketing, the companies can communicate the message, gather information, feedback and need and wants of the customers. Telemarketing is an important part of any marketing strategy. It can be used to follow up on a direct mail or email offer, can be used for generate leads, qualified prospectors that have downloaded information from your website, to keep your database up to date, to conduct marketing research. Then the second one is the buzz marketing. The buzz marketing is a concept of capturing attention of consumers and the media to take the point where general talk about your brand becomes entertaining, newsworthy and fascinating. For example, launch parties where celebrities are chief guests. A very successful word of mouth promotion creates a buzz among the public. A buzz is a highly intense and interactive form of word of mouth marketing where information moves in a matrix pattern rather than a linear pattern. When everyone is talking about a particular product, we can say that the product has a buzz in the market. Then the third one is the web marketing. In web marketing is done through email and other sources of internet and information technology. It encompasses email marketing, banner advertising, viral marketing, line exchange, etc. Internet marketing is a very broad area and web marketing can be used to promote brand awareness among consumers. For example, pop-up on sites. Then the next form is the viral marketing. Network enhanced word of mouth. Internet is convenient and affordable. An interesting shift is occurring as we are now in a network economy. The pioneer of viral marketing was Hotmail. The viral commercials often take the form of funny video clips of interactive flash games, text or images. The main strength is its ability to attract a large number of interested people at a low cost. Then the next one is the mobile marketing. Mobile marketing is the use of mobile phone as a medium of communication and entertainment channel between a brand and its consumers. Mobile marketing is the only personal channel enabling spontaneous, direct interactive and targeted communications anytime, anywhere, at any place. Then the next one is the green marketing. Green marketing is also known as environment in marketing. Green marketing consists of all activities designed to generate and facilitate any exchanges intended to satisfy human needs or wants such that the satisfaction of these needs and wants occur with minimal determinants impact on the natural environment. Then the next one is the cross-cultural marketing. Cross-cultural marketing is defined as the strategic process of marketing among customers whose culture differs from that of the social norms and values, education and living style. If the marketing organizations want to be the winner in the cross-cultural marketing, they must create the marketing mix that meets the customer's values. Cross-cultural marketing demands marketing organizations to be aware of the sensitive to the cultural differences, to respect the right to the culture by the customers in various cultural and marketed places. Dear students, let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. The concept of strategy, one has to recognize the dynamic nature of air cargo industry. This can be achieved through coordination, bridge facilities development, stakeholders and meet the needs and wants of the air cargo customs. Of marketing air cargo services is a relative new as compared to marketing of other materials. This area is given less importance and resources as compared to the other areas of airline services. At the present time, the most of the airports do recognize the importance of air cargo operations in their overall development. They have given importance to the cargo operation and its marketing plan in their financial allocation and they have professional personals to deal with this area. The air cargo industry is different from other industries before designing marketing. And with this module, I sum up this module. Thank you.